Good afternoon, my name is David, I'm a nurse from Portugal. I'm here interviewing Dr. Adela Minion, who presented here at PCR the DISCO radial trial. Thank you for accepting this interview. Would you please tell us if you think that uh, um, distal radial access will uh, have the same uh, problems getting into the interventional cardiologist as the radial access had uh, in relate to the femoral access? Thanks, David, for this very important question. I think the people that have moved from femoral to conventional radial uh, had a lot of benefits in terms of reduction in vascular complication and major bleeding. Of course, you will not expect the same amount of benefit from when you shift from conventional radial to distal radial. But the advantages are at another level. I mean, the hemostasis process is easier with the distal radial. Uh, you work as a nurse, so you know that how cumbersome it can be to, uh, to take care of all this hemostatic process after conventional radial to avoid radial to occlusion. And if you look at distal radial itself, it's a single, uh, it's, it's the, probably the, 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 the single most effective technique as itself to prevent radial to occlusion. So I think that is one of the main advantage of this technique. And we have shown again in the disco radial that uh, in the distal group, the rate of occlusion was extremely low with only two cases of forearm radial to occlusion out uh, of 630 patients randomized in the group. So I mean, it's a very effective method to prevent radial to occlusion. Although in the conventional arm, uh, we also, uh, the operators made a great job also by uh, implementing uh, best preventive strategies and also ended up with a very low rate of radar to occlusion and no difference between the groups. But I mean the, the benefits are different than when you compare femoral to radial artery uh, uh, access. It's, yeah. Thank you very much, very interesting. And one other question, now that everything has ended, the, the trial is over, if you would go back, would you change anything about the design? Would you research anything else? What would you change if you had the chance now that you've already done this path? Very good question. I think the, um, regarding the rate of occlusion, when you implement uh, best preventive strategies, we have done a great job. If we wanted to show a difference, we had to include maybe 10,000 of patients to show a difference. So, I mean, if you implement good preventive strategies, I think it's difficult to find a difference. Regarding the other, uh, let's say, aspects, uh, the crossover rate was higher. So maybe we could have done a better job by uh, accessing the distal radial. Maybe uh, more use of ultrasound for, for uh, puncturing the artery, or maybe we can have a better uh, pre-procedure assessment of the distal radial by doing uh, an echo before the procedure. Or uh, So that would be probably the technical aspect are important because what um, preclude uh, the widespread use of this uh, access is the higher crossover rate, which can be disturbing for an experienced radial operator. So you need, we need to understand a predictor of failure. That's very important for the future and to, to spread up this technique among the radial community. Thank you very much. Please remember to follow us at hashtag EuroPCR. Stay tuned.